Hello, this is Lady Boulay, and welcome back to Black American Lineage. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your thumbs up. Thank you for your comments. And thank you for subscribing to the channel. Thank you for supporting this channel. I really appreciate it. And today I want to talk about a group of men that I hadn't heard of before. I can't believe I'd never heard of these. Throughout the history of the United States until the end of World War I, the Navy had enlisted African Americans for general service, but they were barred from joining from 1919 till 1932. From 1893 onwards, African Americans could only join the Navy's messmen's and stewards branches which not only segregated them from the rest of the Navy, but also precluded them from becoming commissioned officers. In June 1941, President Franklin D. Roosevelt signed the Executive Order 8802 prohibiting ethnic and racial discrimination from federal agencies or contractors involved in the defense industry. So all this is telling us is that the Navy was segregated up until 1941. You could join and cook and clean up, but you couldn't be an officer. <laughs> that's all they're saying, and that's no surprise. In April of 1942, thanks to protests and pressure from civil rights leaders and the black press, the Navy allowed black men into the general service ratings for the first time. To ensure their failure, listen to this now, to ensure their failure, the normal training period of 16 weeks was reduced to eight weeks for the black cadets. When they realized that someone in the Navy wanted them to wash out, the cadets covered up the windows of their barracks and studied all night. When they were tested, the entire group passed with high marks. Disbelief in the chain of command that an all-black cadet class could achieve higher scores than an all-white one meant that the black sailors had to suffer the indignity of retaking their tests again. Again, all 16 passed. The class average at graduation was 3.89. I don't know what the top score was, but apparently they did well. Although all 16 members of the class passed the course, only 12 were commissioned in March of 1944. The reason why only 13 gained rank, despite all the men being successful in training, was never explained. Because Navy policy barred blacks from being assigned to combat ships, the first class of black officers were assigned to command shore logistic units, small tug and tender boats, and training African American enlisted. So they couldn't, even though they were superior officers, as far as I can see, they still weren't allowed to go into combat because of segregation. So in other words, they couldn't go out to sea and fight. They had to stay around on the base, doing little boats and, and training other black people. President Harry S. Truman officially desegregated the U.S. military in 1948. At the time of the Golden Thirteens commissioning, there were approximately 100,000 African American men serving in the United States Navy's enlisted ranks. Wow, that's pretty good. Of the 13 most separated just after the war. In 1987, the United States Navy reunited the seven living members to dedicate a building in their honor at Great Lakes Naval Recruit Training Command, Illinois. Today, building 1405 at RTC Great Lakes, where recruits first arrive for basic training is named the Golden 13 in honor of them. Well, that's good. In 2006, ground was broken on a World War II memorial 
in North Chicago, Illinois, to honor the Golden 13 and Doris Miller. Today, the Golden 13 Memorial is located at Veterans Memorial Park, Sheridan Boulevard, and 18th Street. Well, finally, they get their recognition. I didn't know who Doris Miller was, so I went looking for Doris Miller, and Doris Miller is a man, and he was a cook in the Navy. They called him Dory. He was the first black recipient of the Navy Cross and a nominee for the Medal of Honor. So he must have been cooking up some good food. After the war, the 13 commissioned officers went on to do other things, but they were very successful. I am going to do more research on these men to find out who they were and how they came to be interested in becoming naval officers. I'm pretty sure, like everything else to do with black people, it was about proving to people that you don't tell me what I can do. I know what I can do. And the only thing that's holding me back is your segregation. So anyway, I, um, I had not heard of these guys before. This is a very interesting and compelling story and I will do more research to find out more about them. Okay, y'all, thank you for listening. Thank you for supporting this channel, and check out my other channel. Sometimes it's interesting things that you might like on that channel, too. I know some of you do, but check out my other channel, Lady Boulay. Okay, y'all, have a great day.